To remain updated with the latest business news, click on the bell icon. How could one feature change from Apple cost Facebook or Meta billions of dollars? Also, will smart vacuum cleaners make our work from anywhere lives easier and a lot more efficient? And we bring you an electric experience with the Audi e-tron. All this and a lot more. I'm your host Ayush Alabadi and this is Tech Today. It's been a tough week at the office if you're Mark Zuckerberg or someone working at Meta. The stock took a bad hit, the Meta stock, after dismal earnings, slow user growth, and so many questions and doubts about the metaverse. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. A few days ago, Facebook said that the privacy change made by Apple to its iOS operating system last year, which was on iOS 14.5, would decrease the social media company Meta's sales this year by about $10 billion. That's 10 Indian unicorns here in Mumbai or Bangalore, and that is one massive number to actually put on record. Well, let's start off with the basics. How could one privacy feature change on your iPhones and your iPads actually impact Facebook so much, a competing tech company, that it cost them $10 billion? So what is app tracking transparency? So basically, your iPhone and your iPads have what's called an identification for advertisers. It's a software tracker or an IDFA. An IDFA is Apple's randomized identifier, which essentially allows advertisers to track your activity across apps and the internet without actually pulling in your personal information. Well, you might be wondering, why are these advertisers tracking me and my data? Well, that's essentially how the marketing and advertising business has worked in a Web 2.0 world where the Facebooks and Googles of the world have actually worked on an advertising-based model. But Apple wanted to change that and Apple wanted to take a strong stand on privacy. Now, these trackers and identifiers are essentially working within your devices. I want to understand how IDFAs are and we'll get an expert to explain that to you. But just in a nutshell and practical terms, if you keep talking around your devices saying, well, guitar or something about musical instruments, don't be surprised if your iPad or your iPhone is listening and a few minutes later, you have advertisements of guitars and musical instruments and guitar training classes and whatnot on all your devices and on apps like Facebook and Instagram. That's what Apple wanted to really do away with and change for its users. That's where this new feature, app tracking transparency, comes in. So, if last year you updated to iOS 14.5 and this year you moved on to iOS 15 and all the latest versions on your iOS devices, then you'll get this option, which is the app tracking transparency option. It's a prompt or a notification on each app where Apple and your iOS device gives you an option whether you want to share that data with the app, right? So, if you do away with that, then your phone or device will not share that data with that particular app or will request that app not to use that identifier data. And this is a big deal when it comes to privacy, but more importantly, it's a big blow when it comes to companies like Facebook and Snap. Now, Meta hasn't taken this line down. Over the past few months, they've come up with statements talking about how Apple is looking at profits and not privacy, so to speak. But Apple is also strong in its stance saying that this is an innovative way and a foolproof way of actually protecting their users' privacy and making sure that they have the option in terms of how much of their data they want tracked by third-party apps. Now, all of these features, IDFA, tracking, app tracking, transparency, can sound a little bit like Greek to you. So I got an expert who's been tracking this space, understands exactly how Facebook operates and, of course, how Apple operates and what they do inside these devices. Tarun Pathak of Counterpoint Research joins me on the show. Tarun, what a pleasure to have you on Tech today. Now, you've been tracking this space for a while and you understand what happened with this one privacy change, this one feature change by Apple that changed the fortunes of Facebook altogether. What is an identifier? What is an IDFA? I'll try to explain it in as simple terms as possible. If you look at the entire advertising space, it works on this TPTR framework, which means track, profile, target, and then repeat basically uh, with the ads. Uh, so this particular app tracking transparency, what Apple came out with last year, it targets the first part of it and the very essential part of it, which is the tracking the user. 
So let's take an example. I'm an iOS user. I'm interacting with a particular app. And now during the process, what happens, a lot of this data of what uh, my data, which, which can be in the form of a location, my browsing history, my IP, um, my spending pattern, that goes along with the app basically. I give them consent to basically have that. And in a lot of the cases, users are not basically aware of it. So advertisers call them as identifiers basically. So with these particular identifiers, they create your digital avatar, or you can say that profiling. So what happens is during this process, the entire profiling is being passed on to the third party agencies or these advertisers uh, used to track and make a dedicated targeting advertising to your um, to you as a user. And now what has happened in the past, all these things were happening. But with this particular framework, what Apple does is that gives users a choice to basically uh, turn it off, which means all these associated identifiers will turn to basically zero for these advertisers and they will not get any data. And this is very, very important part. Like I said, is the first part of the TPTR framework, uh, which means um, your tracking history will be virtually zero for these advertisers. And of course, there are other ways to track you, um, to track your digital history, but um, this largely applies to what you are doing outside right. that particular app, basically in the form of your browsing or what other things you are doing uh, outside that particular app. Now, it's interesting to see how in this interconnected world that we live in of likes, shares and retweets and comments and subscribes, well, essentially, Anything happening in that tech ecosystem can impact another company and actually a small privacy feature change can cost another company billions of dollars in revenue. But at Tech Today, we also like to look at innovation. So enough about talking about these intangible things. This is an Unbox Today special. Is this, well, just a gimmick? You've seen this with influencers, with celebrities. Now it's here on the Tech Today set. Or is this a true bank for your buck? Well, let's find out. Work from home, work from anywhere, digital nomads, quarantine, staying indoors. These were all concepts we became very familiar with during the pandemic in the last two years. And we had a lot of problems, I kid you not. And a lot of us turned to technology for answers, dishwashers, washing machines and stuff like that. And then if you opened your social media pages, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and your favorite influencers and celebrities, somehow while they were quarantining or staying indoors, they always had this with them. And you thought to yourself, is this just a gimmick or does it actually make your life a whole lot easier and a whole lot healthier indoors? That's why I unboxed the Dyson V12 Slim Laser Detect Vacuum Cleaner. Now this is a first such launch in India and you're seeing it exclusively on Tech Today on Unbox Today. And no, this is not Thanos' arm. This is truly, well, a vacuum cleaner, a cordless vacuum cleaner, and one that's mighty good at doing what it promises, but at the particular price tag that it's being offered at, and the fact that you have so many modular replacements and modifications, and if you really are fancying all of this, well, then you're gonna enjoy the next few minutes of this particular review. Because we're asking a very key question about the Dyson V12 and any other such cordless vacuum cleaner. They're expensive, are they worth it? Now, as amazing as this looks, well, this is the true showstopper because when you wanna reach those hard to reach surfaces, well, this is what makes your life a whole lot easier. And it truly makes things click. I'm saying click because if you think about how this works, it's all modular, wherever you see these red buttons. That's essentially what makes this whole thing modular. Now, there's a whole lot of attachments if you saw the unboxing process and these are for dusting and then for smaller things. And then, of course, this one, it bends in places that you can't always go and you can do your regular cleaning with this with the easier stuff. But what makes this special is none of these. What actually makes it special is one, this. This is the anti-hair tangle screw. So this is a special attachment which if you put over here becomes a whole lot easier when you want to actually clean floors and actually take well pieces of hair or fur. This looks at it without tangling them and then it's very easy to clear it out as well. But this is not the real showstopper, right? This is how you 
unlock it, the showstopper and why this is the first such launch in India with laser detect technology is this a fluffy head. If you look at this, this has the same modular design with the buttons. And then here obviously is where all the cleaning takes place. You can put it on a carpet, you can put it on the floor and I'm gonna show that to you as well. But as soon as you flick this on, and that is when the magic happens because it emits this sort of green laser and there's a story behind why they did this and we've been testing it out and we've been fascinated with the results. So what they've essentially done is Dyson has engineered this laser dust technology to ensure that your home can be deep cleaned. So what this laser dust detection technology does is it reveals the particles that you can't see with your naked eye and it actually puts this laser into this fluffy cleaner head. So you can switch it on and just have a look at what it does to the floor. I mean, you look at some of the things we've, we've actually scattered around the floor and it's cleaning them effortlessly. Everything gets sucked up. And the coolest part about it is that it's giving me a real time result on the LCD. They have, well, three modes. One is the eco mode, as you can see here. And then you click again on this button and it goes to the medium mode which is slightly more wattage of energy. And then it goes to boost mode. This is a compact cleaner, but I think for a house, a one or two BHK, on one single charge, it does the job. It takes around three to four hours to charge this for a full charge. Once you're done with it, it's very easy. You flick this and there you go. You can just drop it like that into the dustbin. You're done with it. You want to clean the filters as well. You can do it with a brush. Actually, this LCD screen tells you how much of time you have left, obviously, 60 minutes, 70 minutes. And then in microns or units of the dust particles, less than 10, less than 60, less than 180, less than 500, different types of particles and germs actually picked up through the sensor. And this sensor is an acoustic piezo sensor. Now, how does this acoustic piezo sensor work? Well, I'll tell you that on Tech Today. Now, in simple words, what the sensor does is it is an intelligent cordless vacuum and it's compact at that as well. As soon as it sucks in those particles of dirt, germs and dust, the piezo sensor automatically determines which type of particle was sucked in. And I don't know if you really want so many details, but you'll have a better idea in terms of how much it's cleaning and what it's actually cleaning. Now you run this bad boy in auto mode and it does all the work for you. It decides those modes and how much power or energy it needs to consume. Because if it sees more quantities of dirt or some sort of particles, it's going to go into overdrive and obviously use a lot more energy. If it sees lesser amounts of it, well, then it tones it down and it goes into eco mode by itself. Now for me, that's a real moment of reckoning for smart home devices because Dyson really has hit the sweet spot in terms of making something look so good with its design language and honestly, it does the job. Now, if you're a germaphobe like me, then this sort of a boy toy should be your best friend. But the thing with this is to befriend someone like this, you need a lot of money. 58,900 rupees is expensive for the Dyson V12. That said, Dyson study actually suggests that 70% people in urban India are actually willing to invest this sort of money in products like this. And frankly speaking, if you're living on your own or you're living in this sort of work from home sort of setup, and you don't want to rely on cleaners all the time, then this can actually help you. It's not just something for dusting. It does a lot more cleaning. And if you have young ones at home or pets, this guy can make your life a whole lot easier and healthier. You know that all of us here on Tech Today are officially crypto crazy. NFTs, blockchain, the metaverse, Web3, cryptocurrencies. We discuss it all here officially on Tech Today. And we have a lot of questions and we seem to get the best answers from our experts. But then we have more questions because we're constantly learning when it comes to crypto. And that's why we thought we have so many questions. Who's the best person to actually answer all our questions about digital currencies, a crypto tax? Well, at the India Today and Business Today Editors Roundtable earlier this week, we had the Honorable Finance Minister joining us. And of course, she answered some of our questions. Here's what she had to say. Madam Finance Minister, of all the decisions you took in this budget, the one that's generated the maximum amount of chatter is your announcement that you'll be taxing crypto assets at 30%. Essentially coming from my last interview with you. <laughs> it was, in fact, in you. In fact, I had quoted it saying, um, somebody said it's not a middle class related. I said, how dare you say that? I was with another senior journalist who said in his office there are so many people who have all gotten into. Didn't you not say that? Yes? 
which all is credits all, to you. And if we are featuring in the budget, which is also why, Madam Finance Minister, you should do even more interviews with us, and we can jointly decide policy making. But that being said. Uh, we, we were part of a business today, Facebook uh, launched this morning, and there were lots of people who were in the crypto space. And the one thing they were saying is that on the one side, you've got different kinds of coins, which are speculative, and you can argue that they're not rooted to anything uh, backed by a central reserve, and therefore, taxation on speculative activities is okay. But there's a whole different world out there of blockchain, of technologies which can fundamentally alter governance architecture for administration and they're saying we've now been lumped in the same category and that is unfair so my questions to you are the following one between whether the tax comes first or the law comes first as chicken and egg why did you choose what you chose no chicken and egg i no. will tax first you <laughs> okay <laughs> secondly how do you see this framework evolve you spoke of a uh, digital currency this year are you serious about launching it this year? Because typically when a project is launched, you do a pilot run in some districts or on a small scale. The RBI hasn't rolled out, a, they've been working on different kind of papers, but they haven't rolled out a pilot project yet. Can we launch it within this one year? And if we do, what form and shape will India's digital currency take? Well, that will largely depend on how RBI would want to handle it. It's not as if after I've said this in budget, they're going to start working. Obviously, any announcement pertaining to aspects which are under the RBI domain, the ministry talks with them, gets the inputs, and only then comes on board. It's not as if 1st February, it's going to be a shocker to them, and they say, scramble, scramble, we'll have to work now. That doesn't happen. We've had consultations with them. Um, about people feeling that I've, you know, clubbed all of them together, and how could I take a call like this? No call has been taken. The consultation is happening. We will have to hear everybody. And after that is when we are going to see how best what we have to do, we'll do. So by assuming that I've clubbed, where I've not done anything yet, they are really wrong. I've not clubbed, nor have I you know, eliminated the possibility of clubbing them. So all this depends on when I get the inputs from the consultation. Well, I'm still trying to figure out the Dyson B12 and I'm slowly falling in love with it. That said, when you talk about innovation, you know how crazy we also are about EVs. And I certainly fancy red color EVs. Read the Tesla Model 3 on India roads. I am really proud and happy that I got a chance to actually drive that car. But Shivan saw that video and now he's trying to make me jealous. So while I try to crack this, well, please, just figure out what Shivan's doing, yeah? Thanks. Hey, Ayush. Now, I know you went on a date with this red Tesla in Bangalore. I'm on a date here as well, but it's with this red-hot Audi e-tron. Now, I have to tell you this, I'm in the outskirts of Delhi and with this car, I want to take this time I have with her to talk about the features and the technology that the car is equipped with because it is coming with a lot of technology which I feel every car will need to make it big in the EV space. What all else is there, how it recuperates its battery, there's too much happening in this car, let's get into it right away. As soon as you sit in the car, you are sort of overwhelmed with the kind of you know gadgetry you see suddenly in front of you. You have this screen which is popping at you from here. You have these two screens over here. The things that I found interesting, I want to get into those. And then I want to come to the main thing which I feel which sets this car apart. The next is a heads up display which you get right in front. And from the angle at which I am seeing the screen in front, the windscreen, I see my kilometers, my speed, which is right there. It gives you the illusion of seeing it beyond the scope of the windscreen, but it is actually being projected onto the windscreen. The entire car is filled with cameras where you don't get an angle. They have created this 3D uh, graphic of the car. Now, this is what is there behind the car as of now, but you have several other options of viewing angles as well. You have this angle which is behind the car and if you want to have a different angle to it, here is a view of the car from the top, here is a view of uh, the car for the front and then you have this as well. And then there is a 3D viewing angle as well. 
This car offers a feature which is known as recuperation, wherein the battery of the car will also charge itself as you drive and there are ways to do it. So there is an option here in the car module where you go to charging and efficiency and there is an efficiency assist. Here you get this option of recuperation which can be either automated or it's manual. If it's automated, every time you press down on the brake, the battery will get a certain charge. So the car has a 95 kilowatt hour battery and the charger that you get along with the car will help you charge the car from 0 to 100 in about 8 hours. And the range that you're getting is anywhere between 300 to 350 kilometers. They are claiming more than that, but it depends on the driving conditions and what all features you're using. Now, for everything in the car, you know, for all the features, you have to resort to this central panel over here. You know, you will be navigating through this. But what takes away from the entire experience is the fact that it is not very smooth. You know, you really need to give it a hard touch to be able to select a certain option. Secondly, we spoke about navigation earlier. So if I go to navigation and if I want to search for a certain destination, I'll scribble something here. Let me see how accurately the car recognizes it. There you go. I wrote tech today and it's saying air owner. It is a bit of a letdown. The other thing is if you have the sunroof open, of course it is to let natural light in, but if natural light hits these two panels, they reflect light like anything. It almost turns into a mirror of sorts. So you really have to lean in forward to be able to get a clear glimpse of what the screen is actually showing. Now, Audi has offered a lot of driving modes in the car, but what is interesting is how the car adjusts with each driving mode. There is a button which they've given right here in front and you have an option to go off-roading, then there is an all-road option, efficiency, comfort, there are many. But what is interesting is how the suspension of the car adjusts to each driving mode. So as soon as I go to all-road or off-road, I immediately feel a sensation that the car is raising up. That means the ground clearance is increasing, the suspension has adjusted to off-road conditions. Why I feel this is important for Indian road conditions is because you need ground clearance, you need a suspension which can exist on Indian roads because if you take a car like the Tesla which was coming into India, the ground clearance is very less. It will take a lot of damage on a road which is not very smooth. So as compared to this car, which will be able to sail past. The Audi e-tron 55 will cost approximately 1.17 crores. So I use overall, after having spent enough time with the Audi e-tron, I feel that Audi has focused majorly on the driving experience and the driving conditions that this car will be used in. Given that perspective, I think the car is a winner. But as far as the technology and the user experience is concerned, I feel there are things which take away from the experience of the user. There are things which can be better. There are things which other players in the game are doing better. So we'll keep exploring more vehicles in the EV space and keep giving you a larger perspective of what to look for and what to say no to in the EV space in the time to come. Back to you, Ayush. Truly electric experience here on Tech Today. We hope you've enjoyed this electric episode. I certainly have, and I want you to tell us what you think about this episode on the Business Today and India Today social handles. I am only going to use this as intended for cleaning purposes, but I'm going to see you here again next week. Until then, adios. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.